Hello and welcome back to Sylvia's Brainery Videos. At this week's Open Seas Cafe, Professor Michael Scott gave us an introduction to running Monte Carlo simulations using Open Seas. The Open Seas Cafe meets every week on Friday mornings, California time. If you're interested, sign up. We help with questions or come up with new topics every week. To sign up, look at the link in this video's description. Thank you. I hope you enjoy this presentation. So here's a notebook with just like a simple like bar analysis, like the canonical reliability in Monte Carlo like uh, problem um, where it's basically just like a 1D bar. You know, it has some, some load applied to it and it has some resistance R, right? And then the you know, the load has some distribution, the resistance has some other distribution. I guess this be load and resistance, right? And then, you know, you want to find, I forget how you draw these things, but you don't want to kind of find that probability of failure between the two. So there's a couple, a couple ways to do it. Right? One is through, since this, since you know the solution, for the bar right the you know whenever the load exceeds the resistance right you can define a function your failure function is r minus s so whenever this is negative right the uh, you have failure this uh fail and then you're greater than zero would be safe so the the resistance exceeds the load, which is what you want, right? And then, uh, so for both, so like here in, in Open Seas, you can define random variables for these two quantities, R and S, right? Uh, resistance and load, you know, with a given mean and standard deviation for each one, which we just picked up here, right? If you want to correlate them, you can. They would generally be not, in this case, they generally not be correlated, but just to make things interesting, uh, we can correlate them. And then this transformation just kind of defines a certain mapping around. Well, I guess we don't need the transformation for the. Each time through this loop, we're going to get two variables. Uh, on zero to one. So we'll get like random numbers like 0 0.2 and 0 0.7 or, or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Each time through the loop. So this this norm.rv's function is from scipy. And it just returns a list of random random values between zero and one. Okay, so so if we draw these, instead of drawing these as PDFs or probability density functions, if we draw them as cumulative distribution functions or cumulative density functions, they'll look something like this, right? Which is basically, this is the integral of, you know, up to all points. You know, if you integrate the curve, right, you'll get uh, the cumulative density, right? That's one. And they all add up to one. All, the area under these curves is one. Right, so in the limit, right, these will go out to, to one, and the you know like the mean if this is s and this is r, right, then right here at point five is the the median, which for the normal distribution is also the mean, right. So this would be uh, two thousand, right? and then for the the load. You know, the mean value, median, would be 1,700. Right? So like this 0.2, we'd go to 0.2, and then boom, read off the R value. And this 0.7, we'd go here, and then read off an S value. Right? And that's what this, trans uh, this transformation handles that for us. And it's also what this X function does so that so this gives us random variable one random variable two right so the the realization for the those random variables this should be x 
zero Python index. Right. You, know, you get two values, right? But it's zero index zero index one. Yeah. Yeah, di different zero and one from the, the random number uh, values. But you know, if we had like three random variables, right? We'd get an x x two, right? And then um, so use the list, and then we pass that u into this transform function, which does the mapping uh, back to the uh, it basically does this mapping here for us. Right? Okay, although we didn't really need to use it for this this version, but um, but yeah. So now we just we just want to like sample a bunch of random values right along these axes, right, and then compare uh, the resistance and the load, right. So we just generate for however many random variables we have, right. We just generate random values along the y-axis between zero and one, right? Which the rand function or this norm RVS function will give us a list of values between zero and one. And, and, then, and then we evaluate the function and then, mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, the basic Python script to run through the Monte Carlo is, you know, set a number of trials, like 50,000 or something, right? 100,000. Just loop through the trials. And then here, what we're doing is we're just getting random, getting random values on the domain zero to one, a, a list of random values equal to the number of random variables. So a list of two, for every trial, we get two random values in the range of zero to one. Right, random numbers, and then we map those out to the the original domain of the the random variables. You know, so we go from like zero to one for the resistance, you know, into a normal variable that's mean two thousand standard deviation one thirty five. This is not not the domain, but the you know, we go from zero to one to basically this distribution, right? And then for the, the next random variable, we just go from zero to one into this distribution, you know, somewhere along the, along this X axis, right? You know, for this distribution, right? And then, and then we use those values to evaluate that limit state function. You know, this thing here. And then if it's less than or equal to zero, it's fail. And then we just count the number, just add one to the fail counter, right? And you know, do that 50,000 times, 100,000 times, right? And then you end up with a, you know, approximation for Monte Carlo, the probability of failure, right? Just the number of fails divided by number of trials. So, so that's a really simple problem where you know the, you know the structural analysis for it, right? Because it's just a, a bar, you know, load and capacity, right? But you could do this with a finite element model. Okay, so then we could do the same thing if we define a little structural or finite element model of the bar. So this is just re redoing the Monte Carlo loop, doing the same U and X transformation thing. If, if you're doing the, the Monte Carlo and the, the script like this, you'll need to generate random values between zero and one and then transform them back to the X space. So the U is like a normalized space and X mm -hmm. is like an original space. Uh, oh, okay. Because if you have like correlated random variables that are non-normal distributions, like the, the transformation, like if everything's uncorrelated, you could kind of just, it's like a diagonal matrix. Like you could just go down and transform each random variable individually but if you have correlation it, it gets pretty complicated and one of the the nice thing or it, it's hard to do in closed form or or in your script and it's a lot of code but open seas has implemented that transformation or open seas has that transformation implemented with this natoff transformation so it, it handles correlated non-normal random variables it, it also handles independent random variables. So, I mean, might as well just do it, you know, 
or just just use it. Okay. Uh, so you know, same same stuff as as before, and then just grab RNS, and then here I'm just you know defining this should all look familiar, right? A a simple little you know one D truss. I think I made yeah the the length of the truss is one. The area is equal to one, <clears throat> and then you know use you know S, which was from there to define the the random variable or to define the load, sorry. And then the resistance R is coming in from, or comes into the material model for the bar, which is just something that's, you know, th this is R and this is, you know, like the, the stress strain for the material. Right? It's a, again, a very simple model, but I think it kind of shows what you can do. Right? And then, uh, you know, just, and then you know, made made this stiffness k. It, it ends up not matter for the limit state function that we have. Like the stiffness here doesn't really matter because we're just gonna you know, see if the if the load, or excuse me, the displacement of this node. Let's call that uh, u. Right? If it exceeds, you know, the yield displacement of the truss, right? So, I mean, we had to write the limit state function a little bit differently because, you know, OpenSeas is doing the, the equilibrium and doing the actual analysis. So you can't just say, you know, R minus S because that's just like a statics thing, right? But to, to, to bring in materials and elements, we, we had to write, write it this way where, you know, R divided by K is the, the yield displacement of the material, call that UI. And then this is the U that comes out of the analysis. So if, if the, the U, what this is saying is if the displacement that comes out of the analysis exceeds the yield value of the material, we'll call that a failure, right? Because it, effectively it's the same thing as the, the R minus S from before, but we, we just couldn't, Writing it that way in open seas would not be, you wouldn't get anything meaningful out of it because it's actually doing the analysis. And you gotta, I'm probably over explaining a, a, a simple thing, but that, that's, that's why this limit state function looks a little different. But it's again effectively doing the same thing because if your displacement exceeds UI, then you know the, the load exceeds the yield. So it's, it's all. The same stuff, but anyway, if if this is less than equal to zero, you know, count it as a fail state, and then and then come back and at the end of the loop, compare your number of fail states to your number of trials, and you get you could do this for a larger model, right? Um, it, there's probably a little extra complications, but you know, just setting it up, setting up the loop, and defining the model, and then you know, mapping random variables or using random variables to define your model. You know, that's all the concepts all uh, the same, but I mean, but you see, you know, we get about the same, whether it's the, the closed form solution or the open seas solution, right? They, they give the same result. And of course, a little bit different because it's Monte Carlo, but you know, effectively the same probability of failure. So, so yeah, but I mean, it gets, again, you know, th this this part here will, could become much larger, of course, for a bigger model, but you know, the, the concept's the same. And, and there's other ways to do this. Uh, like I'm just, you know, wiping out the model and rebuilding it every time through the loop. And if you had a big model, you may not want to do that because, you know, you got to create and destroy everything. 100,000 times or whatever, but <clears throat> there's, there's other ways to, you, you can define the model once and then do the parameter, update parameter uh, functions, like wipe, wipe the model, reset it. So this third way to do it, right? You just, you've defined the model before the Monte Carlo loop, right? Same, you know, hardening material, truss, load, um, Actually, this should, these values don't really matter, but uh, 
just be mean ass. But anyway, uh, and and then here's the Monte Carlo loop. So here, I think Bijan, this addresses your question. So what we do is reset the model back to its initial state, right? And then do the U and X thing, and then call the update parameter function. Uh, and, and I'll, I'll get back to that in a second, but then, and then do the analyze and then the limit state function. The difference here is these update two functions. Point, uh, yeah. That, yeah, that'll overwrite what we define up here as a parameter. So like for parameter one, we're saying it's the, the yield strength of element one, which, you know, this, this goes back to element one and then it, the, the code FY, you know, tells it to you to map the parameter into that value of element one's material, right? So whenever you do update parameter later in the loop, right, it's going to overwrite this value, right? So you, you reset the model and then you go in and update the parameter, right? And then you rerun the analysis. Right. And then parameter two, you know, goes to load pattern one, nodal load two, degree of freedom one. So this is node number and then DOF number. So node two, degree of freedom one, and this just goes back to, you know, to load pattern one, which is right here. And then load at node two, there's only one degree of freedom. But so whenever we update parameter number two, right? So it's parameter one, parameter two. For parameter two, it'll just update the load applied on the node. And then we rerun the analysis and then do that same limit state function. So, so this the advantage here, right, is you don't have to create and destroy the model 50,000, 100,000 times, right? You just reset it back to its initial state, right? And then update parameters and analyze. So kind of, you know, three, three ways to do it, or really two ways with OpenSea's models or finite element models. The first way we did with just the random variables was it wasn't really using OpenSea's models at all. Right? You could very easily just kind of split up, write scripts that each one does like 20,000 trials and then just run them in parallel and then bring them all back together with 100,000 trials. Yeah, the Monte Carlo was you know, what they call embarrassingly parallel. It's, it should be almost a linear, linear speed up um, unless you have a parallel model or, or you're doing parallel analyses. It, it all looks simple with a bar problem, but it's, uh, <laughs> it, it gets complicated or, or can get more complex, uh, you know, later with, with bigger models, but not all of the elements and materials have these parameter functions defined. Mm -hmm. Right, so not not all the soil springs may be able to recognize whatever parameters you have. I'll show you where to look in the source code. Um, so if you go to like any, so I guess okay. So then, so for that one or for any material, right? You'd you'd want to look for the set parameter function, and this just tells you like these these strings here just tell you like which input value or which input strings it can take with the parameter command. We'll, we'll come back to this one. With the, the model we just did, we just did the hardening material for the bar, right? And it's, it'll take, for the yield strength, it'll take either, you know, sigma Y, little Fy, or capital Fy. And, and we gave it this one in this, the script. We had hardening material. And then we said parameter one, element one, Fy, this right here. So that, that little string is what OpenSeas takes out and then ultimately passes down into the set parameter. So this value, this statement becomes true. And then it says, okay, we can deal with this. It returns a, a key of one, you know, this, you know, one, two, three, four. And then later that parameter ID or key of one gets passed into update parameter, which is what we call inside the Monte Carlo loop. And it says if if it's if the key is one, or the parameter ID, which is what we're switching on, then we just grab the you know real grab the number that's passed in and just use that to reset sigma y within this material. 
right? So it's we, we set it up this way and then we update with this function, right? So it, if these two functions aren't defined in your material, you can't you can't do the set or the, the parameter updates. So then for elastic material, right, it had, uh, you can give it E, E positive, E negative, or the damping tangent eta, right? So I assume, you know, like if you gave it E, you know, that would just change the modulus you know, for E positive, E negative, and then that would update the slope, right? Um, and then if you wanted to, if you had any viscous damping, right, you could set another parameter for eta, and then that would get updated down here, right? So owner, you asked about pinching four, right? Uh, oh, it has... I'm surprised that it's it's implemented, but yeah, it's there, right? But it has, I guess, all these forces and deformations on point one, point two, point three. I guess these are the backbone points, and then positive, negative, and then these things. I, I'm not very familiar with pinching four, but this should th these all make sense to you. Yeah. So it, it will not be just one point, it will be more point in, if we want to do Monte Carlo for pinching for, not just one parameter. So it will be like uh, all the maybe envelopes and also plus these. Uh, yeah, I did. yeah, I don't think you would want to do all of these points mm -hmm. or all these as parameters, but you know, you would pick certain ones and then you could. Yeah. Maybe the, last on the initial stage, you mean the, like uh, the first yeah. yielding point, maybe. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. And then down here, they, you know, just switch. There's, I guess, 19, 20, 22 different variables you can use. And then for update, it just switches through and then sets the, sets the one you want. So, yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, if, if the, you know, since the parameters changed, right, it'll, update the envelope, right? So if you move like the yield point, it'll like recalculate oh, okay. the envelope with this this function here, right? Which I believe will then go back and uh, calculate all the stiffnesses and everything. Yeah, K positive, K negative. So it's just based on the, the first point, stress one positive, stress one negative, right? So, so these could have been updated in the, update parameter, right? And then they call this function just so this everything stays consistent with the new updated values. And then just re recalculates all these, all these values, right? It, sh it should work. Right? Changing the parameters should work yeah. as well, right? Because it's, it's, it's updating the envelope, right? So, you know, like if you have, so you're like defining this point, this point, this point, I don't know what there's five points or something, right? The set envelope functions calculating the slope yeah. and then that slope. And of course, if you, if you were to update parameter and say, move, increase the strength of this up to here, right? You need to recalculate the slope, right? Yeah. And that, yeah. That's what all this stuff is doing. The Open Seas Cafe meets every week on Friday mornings, California time. If you're interested, sign up. We help with questions or come up with new topics every week. To sign up, look at the link in this video's description. Thank you.